college I am early the on. the system of this show. Was not really good. He is the system um, here at 95.7 The Game. But attendance, Trent Williams is not in attendance. Obviously, he wants a big deal. And, you know, I'm seeing this uh, text, you know, to me, 707. To me, Trent Williams is out of pocket. He was the highest paid when he signed the contract. But again, yesterday's price ain't today's price. Uh, okay. And when Trent Williams is playing at a high level as an all pro, and he's going to be on a, on a uh, top one, what is he going to be in the top 10, top five, in the top 100? And that means something to a lot of people, especially fans and these players. Well, he's like, he's looking at this new money getting thrown around. It's like, oh, Hold up. I'm not walking into the season. Week one against the New York Jets as the sixth highest paid offensive lineman in football. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on, John Lynch. We got to bump it up. So the Niners just said, hey, look, we know this was happening. We knew we were prepped for this. We were talking about it. Then what the hell is taking so long? Well, we, we do this thing in football where it's like, well, you can cut a guy at any time. It's like the Niners were trying to cut Jimmy G for like three years. Yep. And when the way the contract was structured, because at the time he had leverage, they couldn't. Yep. Right? Remember that? They they literally couldn't. They couldn't they couldn't get rid of the guy. So like like there's a happy medium here. I, I'm not saying that like that guys can't get what they think that they're worth, but like where do we draw the line? I guess is the question that I, I keep coming back to. Uh, I I had a I had a, a good year. Five other guys signed. Like does every year, every contract need to be renegotiated? Because it sort of feels like that. Well, it just feels like if that. If you're a big player, by the way, some breaking news in the NBA, four, after 14 seasons, Gordon Hayward is retiring. Gordon oh, wow. Hayward, uh, 2017 NBA All-Star in Utah. Wow. Uh, obviously played for the Jazz, Celtics, Hornet, Thunder, had the gruesome injury day one of his Celtics tenure uh, against the Cleveland Cavaliers where he had that gruesome injury uh, early in that basketball game. Gordon Hayward retiring from the game of basketball. All right, back to football here. Trent wants the bag. I wants the bag. What's going on with the 49ers here and there? Let me, let's me let start with this. Let's have some fun. As you're listening to 95 7 the game, KGMZ FM and AC1 San Francisco and Odyssey Sports Station, always live on the free Odyssey app. We're going to talk a lot about Brock Purdy today. And not necessarily his money, but some of his Tom Brady quotes. And in the top 100, Brock Purdy named the 28th best player on the top 100 list. Too high, too low, just right. Now, he's above some big-time names, one being Joe Burrow. Fair? Not fair? Well, are we basing this off last year? If we're basing it off last year, I think maybe he's too low. Well, okay. Like, the top 100, are they saying, like, based off what you did last year and then going into well, this the year? Well, the players vote on it. Players vote on it. Joe, Joe, top 100 is usually based off of the last season, right? Because guys drop out, guys yeah. drop in, guys so if drop it's based out. On last year, so like, based on last hurt. year. Well, if it's based on last year, then... Bro was hurt. If it's based on last year, Brock Purdy's too low on this list. Yeah, but you have guys like, for example, like Fred Warner, I believe, was 11 he, on he the was. list. And I mean, so they're, they're, it's not just quarterbacks. It's like old no, players. No, I, I understand. So if I was doing the ranking, like on, on the Niners, like, it, and I don't know what where he's going to end up landing, but like CMC's clearly the best player on the Niners. And if you want to say Fred Warner is... You know, fifteen slots higher, give or take, than than Brock Purdy. Fine, if they flip flop, I'd be fine with that too. Like you, people are going to dilute Purdy because he plays with a lot of really good players. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's real. The fact that he's twenty eight to me is it's pretty respectful. I it's think it's respectful, pretty respectful. I don't think it's anything it, right, to be outraged right, over. Well, do you? I'm not going to be outraged over it because it's a it's a list voted on by the players, but it is too low. Brock Purdy was. One of the 20 best players in all of football last year, in my opinion. One of the 20 best players in football. I don't care what position. You throw all these positions in a pot. Brock Purdy, in my opinion, was top 20. Well, let's just go to the Niners. One second, one second. Let's go to the Niners. No, 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 Justin Jefferson was 18 despite missing a ton of games. Michael Parsons was 17, down from eight a year ago. Dak Prescott, 16th on this list. Dak Prescott, 16th. Well, I think the Jalen Hurts, 15. Well, that. Uh... George Kittle, 14. CeeDee Lamb, 13. Josh Allen, 12. And Fred Water, 11. So to me, that's like. Obviously, we're we're baking in resume when we're doing no, these things. But it's based no, on the last season. I'm saying the players season. are. I'm saying the players are going to have like well, they're going to give Justin Jefferson the benefit of the doubt. And, and what and I don't agree with it. But what they're probably saying is like, well, Dak doesn't have an All Pro 
running back. Dak doesn't have an all pro tight end. Dak doesn't have an all pro left tackle. Like that's, I'm just telling you how pe- how players around the I, league do the evaluation. I, I don't know how they do the. I don't know how players do the evaluation. Dak, Dak and Hurts, I. I, I, I don't know how to. Take I don't know how the that. players. I'm not. I'm not going to speak for the players and how they do the evaluation. Well, they spoke. They 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 spoke it off of what happened last year. Dak. I now nah, I didn't watch the video montages. I'll do that over the weekend where they do the little three minute yeah, montages yeah. on each player, which I always love. Those are always great. I never forget the top 100 all time list when they went to Randy Moss. I was like, wow, this guy was great. He was just like, yeah, of course he was great. But he, you look at the videos, they're like, damn, this guy was. Re-. But Purdy. Was in the top five in MVP voting, right? Would he finish number three? Mm-hmm. Finished number three in MVP voting. Based off the whatever AP or whatever the the writers. Brock Purdy, in my opinion, had a better season than Dak Prescott. I don't care who was surrounding okay. him on the football field. It is what it is. Dallas Cowboys throw the ball a lot more than the 49ers. And you look at Brock Purdy maximizing his pass attempts. Brendan Dayuk maximizing his targets. Christian McCaffrey, of course, maximizing, maximizing all his touches. But if it's based off last season, how the hell can the players say that Dak had a better year? Or forget Dak. Jalen Hurts is 15th on this list. Jalen Hurts have a better year than Brock Purdy? No, and he has weapons too. He has a lot of – No. A.J. Brown could arguably be a top five wide receiver. Devontae Smith arguably could be a top ten wide receiver. If Dallas Goddard is healthy – he arguably could be a top 10 tight end. His offensive line, Lane Johnson, Dickerson, mm-hmm. uh, 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 Jason Kelsey last year, his line was legit. And DeAndre Swift ain't no chump at running back. So Jalen Hurts is 15th. Brock Purdy's 28th. My well, argument is Brock Purdy's too low. Well, I think, okay, and again, that's fine. Uh, 28 is fine. I, I have zero issue with I don't, it. I'm just saying. No, just I know, but here's up. what I would say to you. I, when the players do this, I don't think players grind all 16, 17 weeks of film for every single player. They're like It's, hey, did we play you? Am I watching you? And I think that if you think about a couple of the standalone games, not the Sunday night games, because I'm not sure how many guys on Sunday night are fully tapped in. Oh, they, these players watch. You see the receiver, Doc? These players are all watching other games. No, I, I they're know. Watching but, everything. but they're also celebrating on Sunday yeah, but, nights. But, but they, they watch football. And uh, then and then you got to think a lot of these teams play each other. But this so is they're, what, or, or, for example, not to cut you off, but these players are watching film. They may not play the 49ers, but they may be yeah, watching the opponent the that plays the 49ers. Yeah. So you know they're sitting there thinking, oh, wow, you see what Purdy was doing to the defense? But, I, but I, I'm going back to and What I'm saying is, is that the standalone game that really sticks out, I think, for a lot of people – it's probably the game against Baltimore because everybody's at home. They're with their families. They're in front of the television. You know, that was a big time game, right? It was a lot of people were watching. It's the Baltimore Ravens you know, versus the San Francisco 49ers. And I think a lot of people probably watched the Green Bay game on Saturday night in the playoffs. And so I do believe that that's going to be baked into some of these evaluations. What about the Cowboys game on Sunday night football? I mean, that was so early in the season, you know. Week I think five. people forget about it. Week five. Well, I don't, so week I'm, not, four. I'm not saying no. it's right. Yeah, no, I, mean, I hear you. But, right. but, but, but like uh, all these players watch. These players watch. They're 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 watching. But don't you also think that players? And this is where like players are going to be the last to come around on someone who's a guts and guile, you know, well, instincts kind of a guy. The physical freaks always amongst players. Like, wow, that guy's an absolute but, monster. Those guys always get elevated. Maybe. But you hear the players talk about Brock Purdy. So many players have come to Brock Purdy's defense. So many players have come to Brock Purdy's defense saying, this guy's a good quarterback. This guy's a really good quarterback. A ton of players, high-level players, high-profile players. This guy's a good quarterback. So, um, it's look, this list is not the end-all, be-all. It'd be motivation for Brock Purdy. It's it's fun. The players vote for it, whatever. And I, I had stopped watching the top 100 for a while. It's like, all right, it's a little jaded. I, I'm not, I don't want to get too worked up over it. But when I did see the list yesterday, I was like, wow, Jalen Hurts 15th. Well, forget, Dak Prescott 16th. Forget the quarterback. It's just 28th. I, I just don't think there was 27. I'm not going to say Brock Purdy's number one, but I do believe Brock Purdy's one of the 20. One of the best 20 players in the okay, league last so, year. So Kittle's in front of him and Warner's in front of him. Yep. I don't think Kittle's season, even though I know blocking and respect and there's all these. I don't think Kittle's season was better than Purdy's. So I don't think Kittle should be higher than Purdy. If we're just going there, okay, right? Let's go so there. Like, like, just going there. I agree. So I agree. Like Fred Warner, man, 
Fred Water had a DPOY type season. He had a monster. I got no year. problem with but Fred they, Water. To me, they should be closer, right? right? In in the numbers. I don't think that, and I'm not trying to rip Kill. I thought Kill had a really good bounce back. Actually, it was a great season. I mean, he had a great season. I thought Purdy had an outstanding season. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And like, so if we're saying it, like, who would I flip flop? Forget right. the quarterbacks. I just flip flop Purdy and Kittle. So, so you're going to go down to who's the five best players or whatnot of Niners last year? Well, McCaffrey's one. Uh huh. Brock Purdy's in the conversation. I think, no order. I think Brock's overall season was better than Trent's overall season. Wow. And so, I don't think it's so, a knock on Trent. So, just, so you believe Brock but, Purdy's but the one, one of the five best players? that sticks out to me is, the, is like, you know, the, the, the Super Bowl. And that's not fair to Trent. But, like, I'm probably, like, I know I have a left tackle. Oh, my God. Left. I get quarterback is, is even more important than left tackle to me. And it. And on this team, it just is. I just, right. I don't know. That's the way I view it. Um, so that's fine. But we, but again, we're splitting hairs. You want to take Trent too? No, I didn't say. I'll I didn't take, take Trent too. I just, I just said Trent too. Yeah. But I, I, I have no, no particular order. But I'm not taking Ayuk not, no, season no, over Purdy. No, no. And Ayuk had a great year. So you kind of proving my point now. Yeah. You kind of coming around to what my original yeah. point was that. Brock Purdy was one of the 20 best players in the NFL last year and should be higher on this list. Yeah, but once you get into the top 30, there's so many great players. There are. But when I look at the, when I look at Dak, so when I look players. at Dak and I look at uh, Jalen Hurts being 15, I'm saying Purdy's not in the top 20. Well, I, I CJ Stroud's up there 20. Well, I don't. Yeah, that's another one. Like, look at CJ Stroud's numbers. So to me, what are they baking into? Well, look, he's playing on the Texans and he's a rookie, and so like they're, they're putting more into it than just. Who was better last year? Yep. So I'm looking at primetime games. They played the New York Giants Thursday night football. They Brock Purdy started them. cooking. They yeah. destroyed them. Uh, Dallas, they destroyed yeah. them. Minnesota was a bad loss. That's, I forgot Two interceptions. About, was that Monday Sunday Monday night football. That was Monday night football. Yeah, that was a bad Monday night football. That was a bad loss. Yeah. But you had Thanksgiving at Seattle. That was a great win. Great win. Great win. He was good and like really good. It's a great in that game. Philadelphia game. I mean, he was awesome. But I think a lot of people were like, Debo, but I think Purdy was amazing in that yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, Debo was special in that game. So, you, you know, you got you got things happening there. Uh, but, you know, Purdy, <laughs> 408, you guys, and others need to stop with this Purdy nonsense. He's a glorified game manager. So, But he had a great a, year. Like, okay, you want year. to say he's a great man, game right. manager? Well, like, we're going to take some calls on the other side. He had because, a spectacular season. So, you know, top 100, is Brock Purdy too high, too low? Get your thoughts on that. We'll, we'll play some of the sound he had with Tim Kawakami the other day on the podcast where he talked about the Brady situation and wasn't necessarily happy about that. And the practice reports. Where are we at with practice reports? I want to ask the fans, how do you consume the practice reports? Who's your go-to reporter when it comes to practice reports? Who is it? Do you trust the information you're gathering? Are you? Do you care about the interceptions? 